Okay, finally, we're in chapter 16, section 4. Uh, go ahead and, of course, you know the drill. Essential question. And let's see, what do you have to know? A whole bunch of vocabulary words. What is a conjecture? A statement that is believed to be true. Inductive reasoning, deduct deductive reasoning, their opposite. Inductive reasoning is when you uh, see small facts. Okay. Then you theorize. This is always not so great. For example, let's say you met one Korean woman and she was funny. Then you met another Korean woman and she was funny. Then you're going to, by inductive reasoning, theorize that all Korean women are funny. That would be inductive reasoning, okay? Deductive reasoning is backwards. You see the big things and then you go um, to prove little things. And in math, we usually use deductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is usually used in science where you look at facts and then you theorize what's happening with the universe and all that stuff, right? Okay, so then you can go ahead and work on these, but that's not really what I'm looking for. Today, for this lesson, mostly I'm looking for definitions. What is a theorem? A statement that you can prove is true. And how are you going to prove that anyway? You're going to use uh, deductive reasoning, okay? We're not using inductive reasoning. Okay. And of course, you can continue on with all of that, but no, I don't really want you to. Here's the most important vocabulary word again. A counterexample is an example that shows a conjecture is false. So, you know, usually when we use inductive reasoning, remember the statement I said, you see a Korean woman, she's funny. You see another Korean woman, she's funny, right? Well, only one counterexample is required to prove that your theory of all Korean women being funny is false, okay? So all you have to do is just find one Korean woman who is not funny at all. She's horrifying, okay? She would be your counterexample, and now because of that one Korean woman that you met was not funny, now you have to say, nope, that theorem is not gonna work. Not all Korean women are funny. I hope that makes sense to you. Ha ha ha. I think it's funny. So then more vocabulary words. What's the conditional statement? A statement that can be written in the form if, then. So then these are all of those. Okay. Addition property if, a. So, you know, these are all things that you have to know. Okay, so write it down in your notebook or something because if it shows up on the test, I would like you to be able to know what all of these are, okay? So addition property means you're adding the same number to both sides. Subtraction property means you're subtracting the same number from both sides. Multiplication property, you're multiplying. Division property, you're dividing. Reflexive property just means A is A, B is B, whatever, right? Symmetric means A and B, B is A, you're kind of like um, flipping them, right? A is here and now A is there. Transitive property, you have A is equal to B, B is equal to C, and then you get rid of the middle part and you say A is equal to C. That's transitive property. Substitution is when you say A is equal to B and then you can plug in something else. I know I went fast because you can pause it and take notes, right? So isn't this really cool, this question over here? I would like you to know how to do this. Because by now, we all know how to solve questions like this, but we never used reasoning before, right? In order for you to leave the x by itself, you got to first add 4 to both sides. And that's why it says addition property right there. Because in order to get this answer, you have to add 4 here and add 4 there. So 14 plus 4 is 18. Then when you add 4, this goes away and you get 3x. That's right. You wrote addition property of equality. Then to get this, what did you have to do? Divide both sides by 3. And so that's the division property. And that's how you get that. And then you just switch the x and the 6. So x is equal to 6 now. Symmetric property. So same thing. You can just fill this out. Very easy stuff. And so over here, you got to write each statement as a conditional. Okay, so I'm going to hope that, you know, you know how to do those two questions right here. Question number five, use deductive reasoning to solve this one right here. It's kind of like exactly the same as actually this question right here. Okay, so you're going to work on that. 
And then same thing with number six, you have to write the reason, okay? So again, when you come to the classroom, I should be seeing you at the boards working on these questions right now, okay? So then now let's talk about linear pair. What is a linear pair? A linear pair is basically this right here, okay? You have a straight line and it's divided by, um, separated by two angles. In other words, when you add angle three and four together, you're going to get 180 degrees. And so that's what it's called. The linear pair theorem basically says if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. Supplementary, don't forget, means you add the two numbers to get 180 degrees, okay? So 3 plus 4, angle, the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 is 180 degrees. Okay. So now let's take a look at this. RT is equal to 5x minus 12. You have to use the segment addition postulate, okay? So we all know that if you go this line and add that one together, you're going to get the whole thing, right? So there you go. X plus 2 plus 3x minus 8. And that's going to equal what? The whole thing, which is 5x minus 12. And that was really all you had to do. And then now once you set it up, you have to actually calculate, right? And so what are you going to do? First, you combine like terms. x plus 3x is 4x. 2 minus 8 is negative 6. You copy this part. Now, and then what do you do? You went ahead and got rid of the small x. Whenever you have an equal sign and then you have x's on both sides, what do you do? Subtract the small x, okay? Minus 4x. So now you're going to have negative 6 is equal to x. Oh, they skipped some steps here, but that's okay. Let me just show you the work. Let me rewrite this. x plus 2 plus 3x minus 8, and that equals 5x minus 12. And we're going to combine like terms, so that's 4x minus 6, so it's 2 minus 8 is negative 6. That's equal to 5x minus 12. When you have x's on both sides of the equal sign, like here, 4x and 5x, we always get rid of the smaller x. So we're going to subtract 4x from both sides. And now we're going to get negative 6 is equal to x minus 12. Okay? So then from here, of course, you want to leave the x by itself. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add 12 to both sides. And now x is going to equal 6. And those are the steps that they skipped. Okay, then you're going to switch it, right? So then x is equal to 6. And of course, you, you need to have your reason, okay, on the right-hand side. So over here, what did we do? We did the subtraction property, okay? Down here, what did we do? We did the we used the addition property, and then over here we get the answer. But then when we switch it, we're going to be using um, uh, what was the term? What was it? I'm gonna go ahead and take a look over here. Symmetric property. When you switch the x, six is equal to x to the other one. Okay, so that seems simple enough. Same thing over here with the angles. You add these two angles together to get the whole thing. And the whole thing, the measure of angle RST, RST is what? This. So you're going to say x plus 25 plus 5x plus 10 is equal to that thing right there. I'm just going to go ahead and scroll down because really all these questions over here, you have to go ahead and uh, solve in the classroom. I'm not going to expect you to understand how to do everything on your own after watching my video, okay? Just make sure you get all the definitions down in your notebook because it's going to help you on your test because it's open notes, okay? So same thing over here. When there's two points, obviously there's only one line going through. It's not like, you know, how are you going to... It's not like you can make any more lines go through. There's only one line through one through two points right and then if there's three lines non-collinear means they're not in the same line okay so basically if you have three points and they're all on the same line then that's different you you create a line but if they're not on the same line then there's only one plane that could go through that so same thing all of them okay 
if two points are on a plane, then there's only one line that could go through it. When two lines meet, there's always only one point that is created. When you have two planes that meet, you always have a line that is created where they meet, okay? So again, this is all definitions, okay? So you have to be able to understand all that. And you are done. So then obviously after you are done, I want you to be able to solve these questions, okay? Again, my recording is not that long because again, it's all about copying notes and memorizing and memorizing is fun, not fun I mean. So just go ahead and take good notes so that way when you're in class, you're going to be able to solve all the questions on the board. So that way I'll be able to help you. All right then, happy learning.